Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Can't Stop the Unk, and we're going to go to our first lesson for Java programming. So, what I'm showing you here, you can all find it on github.com slash can't stop the unk. I'll put the link in the description below. And so the first thing you need to learn is what not to worry about. So don't worry about this public class, the public static void main, or the package up here. What you want to focus is everything in between the brackets here and here. So the first thing you need to know how to do is how to comment. So you can see here I put a slash, star, star, or you can just put a slash star to make a multi-line comment, like a paragraph comment. And if you want a single line comment for just one line, you do a slash slash, like I did right here. So what comments are, you type things, so they're comments, and they're just telling users or your, to help yourself you know, what's going on, but they're not actual code that gets executed. Now the color-coded things over here in Eclipse, those are actual code. So the first thing we're going to go over is uh, primitives. So there's eight types of primitives in Java. And a primitive is just like a Java term for like an int, double, byte, short, long, float, char, and a boolean. And so I have all examples up here. So now we're going to discuss how to declare and initialize variables. So what that means is declaring a variable, you got to give it a type. So you give a primitive type like an int or a double, byte, or whatever. So in this example, I'm using int. And then you got to give it a variable name. So that's what we call declaring a variable. You give it a type and a name. And usually names are camel case, which where the first word is in lower caps, and then the next word, the first letter of the next word is capitalized. So you have integer is your first word, and then you have min, where the, cap, where the n is capitalized. So that's what we call camel casing. And that's how we typically create variable names in camel cases. So to initialize a variable, what you want to do is give it a value. And then you end every code with a semicolon. So that's the equivalent of like ending your sentences in English with periods. So you make sure you always put semicolons at the end of every code statement you make. So this right here is an example of a variable that's been declared and initialized because it has a variable name, a type, and it's initialized with a value. And if you read the comments of all these initialized and declared variables, they have descriptions of like how, what's the maximum value that an integer can hold, what's the minimum max value of what a double can hold, you know, a Boolean value is just a true or false value. So if something's true, that's what this Boolean value holds. And if something's false, that's what th this Boolean val value holds. And there's other types of characters, which are individual letters or symbols like exclamation marks or slashes or whatever. And then you have a string, but you have to note that string is not a primitive. String is just basically a sequence of characters. And, but, and strings are actually called objects, which is something we'll go into a lot later. Um, but basically just know that strings is a sequence of characters and that it is not a primitive. There are only eight primitives, which are these up here. And now the last thing we're going to go over is how to print stuff to the console. So what that means is, so if you look down here below, you can have all these tabs right here. But the thing is, this we're going to focus on is called this console. And so when you want to print stuff out to yourself or like to your users or whatever, you can just print things out. So in order to print things out, there's two main ways that I personally use, which is in Java, you can do system.out.println and then use the syntax. And then whatever is in here, you put in quotations, and then you can print whatever strings or whatever sequence of sentences you want to put in. And the other way is you can use printf to print stuff out. And there's a subtle difference. So when you print stuff out in using println, you can you basically put in quotations, and then if you have a if you have a variable value that you want to print out, you got to end the quote like you did here. So this is your string. And then you use the plus symbol. And then you put your variable name. And that will print out the value of that variable. So integer min. So we look it up here. We declare initialize it up here. So have a value of negative 2 billion, right? Something like that. And then you, when you want to add a string again, you use plus 
and you use max and you can just type in whatever string I use max here and then I want to print out the value of the max so I use the variable name integer max where we find up here is around positive 2 billion and that's how you print things using print lin. so you use a string using quotations and if you want to concatenate things that's what it's called you use the plus symbol to concatenate other variable values or other strings also a side note so it, it might be confusing what if you want to add two uh, integer values like this right here in this print line statement that I have here. So this shows you that this plus symbol can have two meanings and it's kind of tricky. So you got to always keep this in mind when you print stuff out and concatenate. So you got to sort out whether you're actually adding two integers or two numbers or if you're concatenating strings together. So remember that they have a double meaning and it just takes practice to figure it out. But it's not that bad. And another thing to know about print line is that every time you, you write a print line statement, it always prints a new line. So when you print this, it's going to print out use quotes to print strings, and it's going to have go to the next line, and it's going to print this thing right here. But if you use print f, you, if you want to go to the next line, you always have to add this backslash n at the end of every sentence. And these are what we call escape characters. So I'll go over that more in the next video. But basically, if you want to go to the next line, after you write your string, you got to add this backslash n, and it will go to the next line. It won't actually print this backslash n. It's just a way for Java to know that you want to create, go to the next line. So it never print this out. So, and then another difference using printf is that you can see right here, I use a percent %d, okay? This is another escape character type of thing where if you want to print, if you want to make a statement, with a bunch of like numbers and like, a, and you don't want to concatenate them like this because it's like slightly inconvenient. You just want to put one big string. You don't have to worry about concatenation and this double meaning of the plus symbol. You can just do it like this where percent %d will print out numbers or percent %f will print out floats. But percent %d is the standard way to print out numbers. Percent %s is the standard way to print out strings like we did right here. And for each percent %d, percent whatever character that follows after it, you put the variable, you end it with a quote, comma, and then you type in your variable names afterwards. So we have a percent D and we only have one percent D, so we only need one variable. We call this, we're gonna go to long num, which was declared up here. And then same thing with float, we use percent F for floats. So we have our entire string and then we have our variable that we wanna replace the value with here. So this percent %f is now going to be printed out with the value float num. For here, you can do multiple numbers or multiple percent %d's or whatever. And these will print out, this first percent %d will print out, will be replaced with integer min. And this second percent %d right here will be uh, replaced with integer max. And you can do this with any type of primitive variables. You can always just replace strings with like whatever string you want to hold right here. And that's how you want to use printf. So those are two main ways you can print out things to the console. So let me run it. So what you do is right click. And you just hit run as Java application. And you can see in the console it prints all this stuff out that you wrote to system.out.println. Okay. So in summary, this is how you declare and initialize variables up here. Make sure your variable names have a type and they're camel cased whenever you use you know, more than one word. Make sure they have a value. Make sure that you end it with a semicolon. When you type in strings, remember to put double quotes around them. And if you use characters, use single quotes. So single quotes are characters, strings are double characters, and Boolean values are just true false variables. And then if you want to print out the values of your variables, then and you want to see what their values are, just you can print them out using system.out.println and then putting whatever you want in it and concatenating with pluses. But if you don't want to concatenate and just don't want to deal with that and you just want to just have one long string and then replace it with variables as you go along, you can use printf. And before we end over here, make sure you check out the intro project video that will be linked in the description and it'll be on my channel as well. And what that video is going to go over is I wrote this little thing, a project for you guys to do if you want to just practice printing, declaring, and initializing variables. So you can do that right here. It'll be in the GitHub package that you download and install, which is all explained in the uh, video lesson zero. And I'll put that in the description as well. 
So this is just a project for you to do and just try out the things that I just showed you in this video. And yeah, there'll be more information in the project video, so go check that out. So that's all I have for this video. In the next video, we'll probably go over loops, if statements, um, escape characters. And yeah, until then, I'll see you guys next time.